Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of Urian Timber and determine whether the defender would serve as an asset to Arsenal's backline. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Timber's role at Ajax, then we'll focus on his strengths and weaknesses, and in between those two points, we'll focus on how he will fit in at Arsenal. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, first we're going to focus on Ajax, and we see them here in their traditional 4-3-3 shape, and there have been times where they have started in a 4-2-3-1 with one of those midfielders playing closer to the striker and then having two defensive midfielders protecting the back four. When we solely focus on Timber, the key impact towards his game is his ability to be comfortable on the ball and how he utilizes possession when he does receive it. What helps Timber specifically analytically and statistically is the fact that Ajax do dominate possession. They were the number one team in possession in the Dutch league. Therefore, when you hone in on those stats, you'll see that Timber was the number one player in that league league for touches. He also had the most middle third touches and that's due to the fact that Ajax are capable of pegging the opposing side in towards their own half. So a lot of the times he is playing in and around the center circle before he steps into the opposition's third. Timber also led the league in passes attempted. He recorded the most live ball passes. He completed the most passes and he also had the highest pass completion in that league. To counter that, that's why when you focus on his defensive metrics, he barely cracks the top 20 for most interceptions recorded and barely cracks the top 25 for ball recoveries. So when we focus in on Timber, a lot of it's going to stem due to what he does with the ball and how he could help Arsenal in that regard. And it starts with the buildup because when you focus on Ajax, there are times where they can play in a 2-3-5 and that's often when they do peg the opposition into their own half. And that's where you see the two center backs, one being Timber pushing forward in a central position with the fullbacks a bit more narrowed alongside the defensive midfielder, but there are a lot of situations where you end up seeing Ajax in a three-man backline. In the earlier stages of the season, it was Daly Blint who was holding his position with the center backs, and that would see Timber as an outside center back, and then they push the right back forward to provide width. But there are situations where you end up seeing the deepest midfielder, in the most cases that was Alvarez, dropping in between the two center backs, and from there, Timber was capable of playing on the left or the right, and that helped form the back three, and that allowed him the space to push forward and we'll get back to that in a second. There are other situations where Timber can drop in towards that midfield if Alvarez does drop deeper and none of the other defending players push forward and you see him in that semicircle or in that midfield blank where he's capable of receiving the ball and then looking to progress play. There are also times where he can tuck into narrow inside left or inside right positions to receive the ball in that midfield zone. There's the rare occasion where he can push a bit higher up the pitch into pocket to space to receive the ball and then he's comfortable in the defensive line receiving it on the left the right or the center ultimately that bodes well with arsenal because this season we've witnessed them playing a 2-3-5 there were times where they have shifted into a 3-2-5 or a 3-1-6 so he's comfortable in that role and the adaptation period would be seamless whereas in many cases where the opposing side will be looking to ensure that the attacking midfielders and the wide players don't get on the ball now timber has the capability of joining saliba and gabrielle at as deep line creators to help Arsenal break the first line of defense and play their attacking players into advanced positions. Therefore, when you see that Timber did have the highest pass completion rate and record the most passes, a lot of those passes, as stated, are out towards his defending teammates or out and towards the wider areas. But one of his high profile passing templates is his ability to find players in those pockets of space between the lines and then look to bypass two opposing players to play the ball in towards his teammates. So while yes, there are the occasions where he is playing the ball out towards the wide areas around the opposing side's midfield bank, he's also capable and has the confidence to bypass the opposing side's midfield bank and play the ball in towards teammates so that they could turn and break forward. So while it's great that Timber is a reliable passer in every phase of the pitch, one of the key traits to his game is his ability to be press resistant, invite the pressure towards him, and then he's capable of bypassing it with his dribble dribbling and his passing. With his passing, he's capable of anticipating that pressure, shaking it off, and then playing passes across that pressure in towards teammates who can then break forward. And that is an element to his game that you do witness on the occasion. But rather than solely relying on his passing, it's his ability to dribble by that pressure and then carry the ball forward to either progress the attack 
or place a teammate in an advanced position in the final third. You witness him doing that in his own third where he can anticipate the pressure, bypass it with his dribbling ability to carry the ball forward, and then progress the play out towards the wider areas or ignite a counterattack. And then the other way that he does serve as an asset is that he can receive the ball in that midfield zone, anticipate the pressure from an attacking player or an opposing midfielder, and then bypass that press and carry the ball forward in towards the final third where he can play a positive pass to help Ajax push forward. In this example, focus on Timber on the ball inviting pressure towards him as he steps into the opposing side's half. He does a very good job of dribbling across that marker to evade that pressure and that's when he now is running at the midfield bank. As he carries the ball forward, he drags another marker towards him but what he does well here is that he shields the ball with his body and it allows him to dribble across that pressure as well it drags another marker towards the ball and from there he could locate his target plays the ball in towards him and then looks to run off his marker to join the Ajax attack and from here you could witness Timber looking to receive the ball in the center circle and when the pass is switched over towards him he does well to evade the pressure that is applied instantly he ends up nodding the ball away from the marker and here he ends up taking a poor touch which allows another marker to step in towards him but what he does well is that when that pressure is applied he's able to dribble across cross that marker with ease, carry the ball into the opposing side's half, and from here you can see that he's taken three players out of the game, and now he can carry the ball in towards the final third. And from there you can see that he locates a teammate making a run into the gap between the center back and the full back, and he plays a positive vertical pass in towards that zone to place his teammate in a legitimate goal scoring position. Another key element to Timber's game is his comfort and confidence on the ball, and again a lot of that has to do with Ajax dominating possession, but when he is one of those outside center backs, he does have the space to push forward to join the attack. Given Ajax's territorial and possession dominance, there's no surprise that Timber did lead the Dutch league in passes in towards the final third. He also was in the top three in regards to progressive passes, and he was the top defender for that. If we continue to look at the statistics, he did lead the league in ball carries. He also did top the charts in terms of total carrying distance. And the same thing applied for progressive carrying distance, yet surprisingly he was in the top 15 in regards to carries and towards the final third. Nevertheless, there is a bit of a difference. He's comfortable in receiving the ball in his own third, and if there is space available towards him and no pressure is applied, he'll look to carry the ball in towards the opposing side's half, and then he'll play a positive pass between the midfield bank, or look to slide the ball out in towards the wide area to progress their play. If we look to another example, here you could see Timber picking up the ball near the right touchline he has enough space to carry it forward as pressure isn't applied instantly and that's where you see timber carrying the ball into the opposing side's half no one stepping towards him or can keep up with his pace and from there he's looking to carry the ball in towards the final third pressure is applied he's capable of holding off that pressure and from there he locates Tadic in between the lines at the edge of the box he plays the ball in towards Tadic in the pocket of space continues his run in towards right half space looking for the return reverse ball however when he receives receives the ball from this tight angle, he ends up failing to test the keeper and he fires the effort in towards side netting. But then he's also capable of stepping in towards the attack when no one's picking him up, joining the attacking play, looking to receive the ball, and from there you, we've seen him make runs in towards dangerous areas where he could serve as a creator or a shot maker, and there are also times where we've seen him jump in towards the opposing side's final third, look to receive the ball, and then attempt to play the ball in towards the forward line to help create an opportunity. And then the final way that he can impact the game from that regard is his ability to step forward in towards that midfield zone to receive the ball and carry it forward into the final third, or simply win possession in that area, carry the ball forward, and then look for teammates making runs in behind or teammates in areas in those pockets of space between the lines, play the ball in towards them so that they could either shoot or serve as creators as well. In this example, you witness Timber joining the attack as no one's picking up his run in towards the final third, and when he receives the square ball, he has three options ahead of him that he can't play in. He invites the pressure towards him, and from here, he sees there's a gap for him to carry the ball between two of the opposing side's players. No one steps towards him, and he plays the ball in towards the center forward, placing him in a position where he can link play or get a shot on goal. And then if you look to another example, it's Timber winning a loose ball in his own half in and around the 
halfway circle. He does well to use his body to shield the ball away from the pressure. He ends up carrying it in towards the opposing side's half and then lays it off towards his teammate. And from there, focus on his movement. He ends up running across the fullback who doesn't track that run or anticipate it. And his midfielder slides the ball across the fullback to place Timber in a position where he could deliver a cross in towards the box. And from here, he locates an unmarked teammate making a late run in towards the box. And he clips it in towards his area, but he ends up nodding a free header over the net. However, when we focus on his defending, there are pros and cons to his game, and there are areas that he does need to improve. For instance, in terms of covering for his teammates, he does have the ability to read the game well, and he does do a very good job of tracking the runs of teammates running off his defenders so that he can get to loose balls and ensure that attacks are broken up. In this example, you witness a pass being played in towards Alvarez, but he ends up missing it as pressure does come across him, and focus on Timber recovering for Alvarez to get to the loose ball, and even though the opposing attacking player was ahead of him, Timber does a very good job of recovering to ensure that he can't break forward in a 1v1 with the goalkeeper, and he does a very good job of holding off that player and putting a foot in to win possession to halt the attack. And then against France, he witnessed them breaking in transition, and look at Van Dijk and Ake being bypassed with the ball being played into Muani, but Timber does a very good job of tracking his run, holding up the forward who was looking to break free on goal, and as Muani looks to go 1v1 with Timber, Timber does a very good job of holding his ground, forcing Muani towards his right in right half space away from goal and he sticks with them stride for stride and force them towards the byline where he uses his strength to make a challenge to halt the attack and he does possess this knack where he does get a bit fortuitous in terms of breaking down individual solo runs in transition but a lot of that stems with him looking to hold his position and then sticking out his leg to block a pass or win a challenge here we witness an example of timber in a 1v1 in transition and you can see the ball carrier looking to push the ball in towards the Ajax half and he does a very good job of looking to push the ball towards the outside as Timber was standstill but Timber does a very good job of recovering getting across him and doing a very good job of using his body to get ahead of the ball and from there he's able to win possession ensure that the attacking player can't push forward and from there he takes the ball towards the outside to win a foul now that can work against him because there have been times where you do witness him stepping in towards a challenge and simply conceding a foul to break up the play and from there he simply just can the booking. In the film that we were capable of recovering, a lot of his defending stems from man marking and having players with their back to goal. And it's not to say that he can't win possession there because there are instances where he does step in successfully to win the ball, but there are a lot of situations where he ends up stepping in towards the challenge recklessly, being proactive, but conceding fouls on all areas of the pitch. In many cases, a lot of these challenges stem with his ability to time and react towards the ball being played and towards the opposing side attacking player so you'll see him stepping into challenges in the opposing side's third or the middle third to win the ball and when it is successful then he's capable of pushing forward to break or ensuring that Ajax were capable of of continuing their attack, but then there are simple situations where he steps in late, didn't read it correctly, and he concedes the foul easily. Against Belgium, Timber does a very good job of recovering his position against Eden Hazard's run into the inside left position. He stands still with Hazard and he does get help, but what he does very well is that when Hazard looks to cut back to the left, he sticks with Hazard, uses his upper body strength to hold him off, and then he puts a foot in to win possession and Hazard falls to the ground. And when Belgium looked to recover possession, he does a very good job of body fainting away from that pressure and then from there he plays a long ball over the top in towards an attacking teammate who checks in towards their own half and from there Holland are able to break forward. The other area of improvement is simply his ability to man mark from set pieces or in open play. From set pieces there are several occasions where he witnessed Timber simply losing his marker and allowing his marker to get goal side of him and that marker is able to get into a legitimate goal scoring position to either score for the goalkeeper into a save or the attacking player simply wasted the opportunity or the delivery just missed them and considering that he could be a liability in that area would be a concern for an arsenal side that's looking to challenge on all fronts from an aerial duel perspective there are situations where he's capable of winning those balls when they are played in towards his own third but other than that in terms of his ability to mark across the pitch even when his sides have conceded goals you break down those goals and you witness timber either not being 
able to command his box to pass off players towards his teammates or simply cover the correct teammate in those situations or he simply once again loses his marker in those attacking plays allowing them to get goal side or get into a position where they're capable of testing the goalkeeper and ultimately scoring so as you could see timber's versatility ability on the ball and confidence to make proactive decisions can improve arsenal's build up through all phases of the pitch yet while he wouldn't be deemed a poor all-round defender there's still room for improvement in specific areas that will ultimately determine the significance of this move.